What's up, everybody? <laughs> Hi. Hey. Welcome back to Yellow Spandex. We just got done watching Shazam. <laughs> we just saw an amazing movie, guys. First off, we'll start. This is probably going to be spoiler written. Very so spoiler. If yeah. you do have not seen this movie, which I encourage you to, to do, it's going to be just full of spoilers. Do not listen to it if you don't want to be spoiled. Although I will say, if you're usually on the fence about things, because I have friends sometimes who don't mind spoiler, spoilers unless it's like a Captain Marvel or Endgame kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like this movie is ruined by plot points. No. Because even though it wasn't necessarily as much of a, f- a family film as I thought it was going to be, mm-hmm. it definitely skewed younger in my opinion, like as far as like audience, a little, a little bit, bit, but dude, like I brought my, I have a twelve, I have a ten, and I have a three. Mm-hmm. My three year old was terrified. Yeah, yeah, no, no, there was some genuinely. <laughs> I was like, oh, that, I'm so sorry. That was one of the th- <laughs> things I was like, this is not as family friendly as I thought it was gonna be. Mm-hmm. Like, the, and okay. Ari was a little creeped at, at points too because yeah. at points. Uh, uh, we're gonna get into spoilers. One of the like bad guys like bites a dude's head off like yeah. Venom style. Yeah, or, like oh it's off screen, but no, he bit his head off. Well, that's Meow. I was gonna say that that's like the first big thing for anybody taking kids and stuff. They're straight up demons. There's seven demons that mm. represent the seven deadly sins, which yes. was an interesting choice. I don't know anything about the comic books. Yeah, it's so, it's just like comics. So, um, but that's another point is um, me not knowing anything about the character and like I knew of the character, but I never read the comics or knew the lore about it. Mm. Um, and having fun watching the movie s- speaks volumes for it because Batman v Superman was another one where I'm like, oh, I know, I thought I knew Batman, I thought I knew Superman, but I didn't know the history that they had put into that movie, and I left just pissed. Like, what happened? Mm-hmm. Like, what? Why was the Flash in electricity? Like, why was Batman like in the military? Like, and then Peter and my uh, my, my brother Peter and Vince were trying to tell me like, oh, this is from Injustice. I'm like, what's Injustice? Well, like, it's, it's a video game. And I'm like. Why do I have to play a video game and know this movie? Like, I don't. <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't exactly like that, but it was um, kind of a, a throwback to uh, the Dark Knight Returns comics, um, mm-hmm. where there's like a there's a face off between Batman and Superman, and yeah. you know, it's it uh, outside of the gen- it was outside of the universe at the time, but it was actually kind of what uh, spurned on like I think the the Tim Burton series. Yeah. So mm. it just like, but that those things that they threw actually not just threw in there, like the whole movie to me was like. Easter egg central without like a cohesiveness to it. And that especially like the whole like flashback or flash forward or whatever that was mm-hmm. thing was so unnecessary to the story. Yeah. I, well, I figured they were gonna try to play it off like later. Like mm-hmm. it had something to do with it, but I don't know. They didn't they didn't, obviously didn't have like a Feige in charge of all that stuff, which is yeah. what we complain about all the time. So they <laughs> never got to that. I'm like, oh, there's something that happened in the future that we need yeah. to go back in time and tell Bruce about. You or know? even just reference later in the same movie so it had some yeah. touching point. But, yeah. you know, whatever. Anyway, we were just talking about Shazam. Like, yes. Shazam, they went for the yellow spandex. Yes. That was the first thing I thought, like, well, actually, yellow's the only color they didn't use. But they went for all the other cal- oh, colors. The, the red. The, the, well, the, 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 the light, light yellow. yellow. Yeah. yeah, but the actual spandex, they went, yeah, like red. And, and the white blue. cape got mm-hmm. kind of beat up on, on the, in the movie. Mm-hmm. But I, I dig it. They were just like, he's going to be like comically buff. I commented to Vince after the movie, like, you can even just tell in his face, like, he's actually chiseled now. Yeah, he he had some video and stuff where he got ripped. But he did a really good job portraying a 14-year-old, 15, 14-year-old? Yeah, 14 going on 15 or something. Wasn't that the thing? So, or is it yeah. Uh, um, yeah, he said, because he, he, when 14? he tried telling somebody later, like, I'm going on 15. Like, That's right, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like if you watch any of his older stuff, like, he's he was obviously in Chuck... Mm-hmm. Uh, which is an amazing show um, Love where Chuck. he's like a nerd, but like, and so he's got that like childish thing kind of going like yeah. in that show, or he's like a good, kind-hearted person. And he just plays a lot of those kind of roles. Like he mm-hmm. was in, uh, I think he was in the second Chipmunks movie as that kind of a thing. Like he's a nerdy gamer, like and he's still kind of like a college kid. He and was also in uh, Heroes Reborn. Reborn. Yeah, but in Heroes Reborn, he was completely different. Yeah, he, he tried. So I feel dark. like he tried to kind of maybe go. He was so dark, but I thought he did a great job. There were some moments that kind of like it was him, Zachary. It was the Zachary moments. Well, when he was like a dad. Yeah, and like, but but then like when he was trying to connect with that one girl. But the whole thing was his daughter died, so he was on the dark side of that. Like, yeah, it was such a short series. I don't feel like they had a long enough time for him to kind of change sides. Yeah, but I thought I did a great great job of. Actually, that was the first time I had seen him in the long sense because that's a Heroes Reborn, though. Yeah, yeah, I because I I'd seen Chuck, but barely ironically because it always aired after heroes yeah so i'd only see like the first 10 minutes and i go to sleep oh because like it was fine to me but <laughs> heroes was so much heroes was like my church you know mm-hmm. so like i couldn't follow that up with anything like that was like the end of my day whatever you know everything and then i like get 
wind down, go to sleep. Yeah. Like, every- well, Heroes was drama, and Chuck was like just comedy because it was yeah. like it was hilarious. It l- it looked yeah. fine. I know my buddy Jeb, my best friend growing up, he loved it because he worked at like Fry's Electronics and stuff, mm-hmm. and so like that was kind of that vibe, the Best Buy. Yeah, he worked at the was it the Nerd Herd? I think it was Nerd Herd. Oh, instead yeah. of instead of the Geek Squad, he worked at the Nerd Herd. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like something you find at uh, Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> And then also, you know, skipping forward a little bit, speaking of the colors and stuff, at the end, when all the kids grew up, mm-hmm. once again, spoilers, uh, I was really surprised to see Megan good, and that really made me happy. Mm. And also reminded me that even though she didn't have the powers of Storm in this movie, she would have made it like a freaking fantastic Storm. <laughs> and she did a great job portraying like a what? Like a five, six-year-old girl? That oh, is, yeah. it, she look, She was like Dora, the, she like an older Dora the Explorer, but I, which is also a real movie coming out. I didn't know that. that I, like, I saw that trailer and I thought it was a meme made by College Humor. Yeah, I thought it was fake at first, <laughs> and then there, then all of a sudden they're announcing castings, and I'm like, this can't be real. And it's like, Danny Trejo is Boots, <laughs> and I'm like, what? In the theater, the... Wait, he's Boots? Yeah. The monkey? Oh my god. Oh my god. In the theater, the uh, trailer runs by, and the guys next to us was, were like, we're definitely not going to see that. I'm, I'm glad that they had to clarify it, because that's like the friend that tells you they're not gay every day. <laughs> It's funny you know, because like, they're like, like, we're definitely not. Wait, I was asking you what you wanted for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, what the heck were you just thinking? Um, <laughs> it's like that that one group of friends that at every movie during the trailers, you know, they always say afterward whether they're going to see it or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like anyone cares or gives a shit in the I theater. I do it all the time. I feel bad. I, like, like this When we were watching this one, I leaned over to my wife. I can't remember what preview was on. It might have been uh, Dark Phoenix. Okay. And I was like, I didn't like it the first time. <laughs> yeah, well, so in general, like when there's like a reason, but like when Dora the Explorer the movie came on, mm-hmm. I felt no need to comment on it at all. No. Like, other than I was like, I'm not sure what I just watched. Like, I want to see the Pikachu movie. Oh, definitely. I just, that's one where I actually leaned over to my wife and was like, you got to admit, you want to see that movie. <laughs> I, I just like Ryan Reynolds. I mean, he's killing it with all this all this great stuff. Pika, Pika. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get me out of here. <laughs> Um, oh, I'm gonna laugh so much at that movie. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Anyway, it was we, I, we laughed a lot in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was a good amount of really it, comedic moments. It poked fun at itself. And Josh knows Shazam. I almost said Captain Marvel. Um, it's hey. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Which we could talk about. I'm yeah. surprised they didn't call him Captain Marvel. I, I think the closest thing was Captain Sparkle Fingers. Yes. But now I'm wondering if that was also a little nudge at the YouTuber Captain Sparkles. That's yeah. actually a little nudge at um, Captain Marvel. Um, okay. Which, uh, I was, um, oh yeah, Sparkle female, Hands. Captain Sparkle Fingers. My wife has a T-shirt that says Captain Sparkle Fingers. Okay, on so it, that's actually a reference to that. Okay, it's a reference to like the comics. So Captain, Captain Marvel. So Captain Sparkles is probably a reference to Captain Marvel. Then. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, which Interesting. is funny because Captain Sparkles doesn't have anything to do with any of those things. Like he started off as like a Minecrafter, I think, or something, and. Now, now it does like reaction videos to Reddit. I think this was also like one of the best sidekick movies I've ever watched. Oh yeah, with like, uh, what was the kid's name? The, with Freddy? like the disabled, yeah, Fre- uh, Freddy. Yeah, the, yeah. He was a good awkward kid because I mm. felt uncomfortable every time he talked. Mm. His little like idiosyncrasies, all the like facial movements and like things, how he would react, and just made him that character so much more amplified for me. And yeah. I, I love that like. Um, they addressed like the elephant in the room where he hid really well that he wanted to be the superhero, you know, because he's yeah. obviously he would have benefited a lot more from it. He wanted yeah. to be a hero, yeah, he was disabled, and then like his uh, st- uh foster brother who never wanted anything is not responsible, not not really a good person to begin with, like got it and doesn't really want it at some point. He's mm-hmm. just like making money from it, like busking kind of, yeah. And and then like you got that emotional payoff at the end where like he just gave it to all of them, you know, like which I saw some of the trailer and I was a little bit concerned about like, you know, uh, Shazam is supposed to give him the power because he's, you know, pure of heart. Like he's just a Mm -hmm. kind kid. He's just been kicked around foster homes or whatever. And so I see him like, you know, he's he's stealing stuff or whatever in the the trailers. And I'm like, "Uh, that kind of rubs me a little bit wrong because you know he's supposed to be searching for a good one. But in the movie, they kind of explain it. They, you know, basically Shazam is losing his powers. He's got to pick someone. And the kid, he's not mean spirited because like, he defends like his foster brother when he gets beaten up by bullies and stuff like that. Yeah. When he hears the right thing, like when it's of, of consequence, it's not excusable. But like he was fourteen, so he, you can be a good person, and just mess up. Like you know, it's a teenager testing their boundaries kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then once he finds them, like he kind of sticks with it. Like he doesn't steal more cop cars or anything like that. Yeah. Um. He does kind of run amok on the city. Like, yeah. Unabashedly, but 
I guess that's that world, you know, that they, they, they live in, they live in a world where Superman exists and Wonder Woman and Aquaman and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I guess the city's just generally used to being smashed every once in a while. <laughs> People seem don't seem to be like too impressed by it. They're just like, eh, oh, another, another dude superhero. walking around with superhero powers. <laughs> well, it's like, a good point that that this is is a they're in a universe where there are superheroes. Mm-hmm. Like uh, another spoiler, Freddy has the bullet. That hits Superman or a yeah. bullet that hits mm-hmm. Superman, and it's like, oh, it could go up for like five hundred something, whatever. And, and Freddy keeps referencing psychological studies of superheroes, like there's all these casual like thing, which is what Batman v Superman should have done, like or things like that, you know. <laughs> or instead of trying to like give like look at the camera, give exposition, they just gave us all these little pieces of this world, and we're just kind of catching up. It was in Philly, which I didn't know that was going to be the setting, because uh, for some of you who don't know, Vince and I uh, were in Delaware before L.A. And Philly is basically Delaware. Like everybody, le- like when you go hang out somewhere, you're going to Philly. Philly's so, our city from Delaware. A, they, <laughs> Delaware doesn't really have a city. A, they they did a great job of making uh, it look like a great skyline mm-hmm. because Philly kind of has a skyline, but not like that. Like I mean, it it was the sky. They didn't like create new buildings or something. They just got like some dope angles to make it look like a big city skyline. Mm-hmm. But uh, they had little references for like Philly folks, like the Geno's Gino steaks, steaks. Mm-hmm. which is funny because now they just picked a side. So in Philly, they probably split their audience <laughs> like, <laughs> between Pat and Geno's. Pat's or Geno's. Pat I, Gino's? Don't know, I don't know this. So Please Pat tell. and Geno's are both, they, they both claim to be the original cheesesteak, mm-hmm. like the f- f- ones that invented it. And they uh, are literally catty 20, corner. 20 feet apart from each other. And you pick which one you go to, and they're very much rivals. And they do op like I forget which one did which, but like at one point, one said like This is America, speak English. And they, <laughs> oh. they don't ex- they don't accept like they, it's not that they don't accept minorities, but if you're not American in their standard, they're like get out of here. And then the other one is like we accept everyone, you know, like everyone everything's like always opposite. Oh, and then there's gyms on South Street, which is like actually really good. And yeah. Hey guys, do- don't forget about me. No, he doesn't say uh. anything. It's, it's like. <laughs> It's like the friend that actually does well and just does well instead of like shouting, you know. So <laughs> I thought, like, I mean, not that they should have done this, but I, it would have been a really funny Philly dig if they had like a gym's bag. Oh, on that dash, that'd have like, been great. <laughs> yeah. Everybody be like, ah. Oh. I'm more of a Pat's guy myself. Like uh, the difference for me between Geno's and Pat's is the Pat's chop their steaks and Geno's doesn't. No. They kind of keep the pieces together. I like the chopped steak better, though. I probably would like the chopped better. I don't know. I've never had it, so I don't know. If you don't know your order when you go up, you have to say it at a certain cadence and speed. And if you have any hesitation, you get kicked out of line. You have to go start Especially over when nice. it's busy. I, yeah. I actually appreciate that. Um, I get scared. I, I get like freaked out sometimes Like when my, my wife starts going, um, I think. I'm There's like, none of that. I'm like looking around like, dude, just I'll pick for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, because you have to go like, like I, want, I want a steak with whiz, like no onions, like mm-hmm. and then they move on. And then if you want, there's one window for the sandwiches and then another window for everything else. So you have to pay like different things. So there's oh, one weird. window you can only order the sandwiches at. And then the other, so you the whole get thing. like anyway, sodas and fries. There's and a little bit of your Philly history. Yeah. But yeah. I, the reason I brought up Philadelphia though is I just watched this video essay about like, like what the inherent problem of bringing the DC universe to film versus the Marvel universe to film in Marvel it's the real United States it's New York and LA mm-hmm. and, but in DC it's like fake cities that exist in the real world so they were like pointing out metropolis is actually somewhere in Delaware geographically star city is like in northern california hmm, I didn't this know that. New York, and then gotham is like somewhere in jersey or something yeah so, they're supposed to be like sister cities right next to each other yeah, oh really like yeah a gotham and uh, oh metropolis and metropolis yes. yeah yeah so so that would make sense because like central jersey would have been like gotham and then somewhere in the middle of delaware would have been metropolis that's it's roughly like maybe like a hundred miles or so it's so about three so, hours away yeah so like so anyway like real brief things like they had mentioned like the world would be drastically different so they just they needed to like just embrace the fictional Thing, you know, instead of trying to have Barack Obama be the president in the DC universe, I'm just glad they kept the name Philadelphia instead but, of like you know something weird. So that was the thing is because they brought it to Philly, it suddenly had this like there was like there were stakes, oh, not not just the Philly cheese, cheese steak, steaks, baby, but like actual like high stakes. Like you, you knew like the 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 area, and also same thing everybody else thought when they were like Philly has its own Cape Crusader. It's like yeah, really, there isn't like a Superman of Philly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they were able to embrace a lot of small, nuanced things. There's not any like big things I could point out. And it's weird to think that Metropolis is in Delaware. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think where that would be. But like, it, I wonder how long that's been the history. Yeah, I, you'd have to think they retconned it at some point in time. Um, but think of that like 
how that would change like the landscape of the country if there were three more major cities in the world mm-hmm. and th- and two of them were next to one of the biggest cities in the country. Yeah. Like if those New York, Metropolis and Gotham like a hundred miles apart from each other, There's like cities constantly. How? Oh, yeah. And then like, but a lot of things, I, I think someone had mentioned, um, there's like Bruce Springsteen references in some DC comics or whatever. They're like, would have Springsteen existed in that universe? Because instead of going to New York to do music, he probably just would have gone to Gotham. Mm-hmm. And then like, what would have to happen to him and got like, it's, it's a whole weird thing. But like Shazam taking place in Philly was like, there was there there was actually like real people like the places were real like the rocky steps you know and that was actually yeah. a really cool scene he's like <laughs> no wonder that guy tried to get all the way up to the yeah. top of these stairs <laughs> it's beautiful up here so when they make real world references that makes sense yeah and there's so i don't know it was really cool and then i saw i'm we're looking at the wiki here what is faucet city is that oh, faucet comics faucet comics was actually before uh dc basically paid for ownership at the time they'd actually sued like captain marvel was in a different comics called faucet comics mm-hmm. my grandpa actually had these comics however mm-hmm. his mother threw them away <laughs> <laughs> and like oh. Oh. he like one of the only comic book things that we like we liked together was like Captain Marvel because he was so similar to Superman. Yeah. Was, you know, DC was suing Fawcett, and uh-huh. rather than Fawcett having enough money to actually fight DC, they're basically like, "We're gonna fold." And then several years later, DC was like, "Well, how don't we just buy him?" Yeah, <laughs> and like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It was it was fun, and I also I, I have I would have to imagine that as a preteen, this is probably even cooler because, uh, I mean, real brief like tangent. Uh, last night, Vince and I got to see an early screening of a movie called Blinded by the Light. Anybody who follow my uh, private, uh, my personal Instagram know that I cried for like 10 minutes on Instagram about it. But like the short version is like it was the first time I have seen like my, my story on film. Not my story exactly, but like everybody has like those movies that you see yourself in. And some people see it more than others. And for like a Korean kid in Indiana, it's like a very this was the first time like. Mm-hmm. It's never happened before. So, like, um, I'd have to imagine that something similar for, like, you know, when I was younger, you imagine yourself getting older and becoming Superman, you know, or playing Superman and stuff. But Shazam, has he always been a kid that turns into an yeah. adult? That has, I didn't know that that existed. Like, to see that on film has to be like a really cool thing to, like, mm-hmm. be like, he's a 14 year old that can become, like, buff and like look adult and like try to buy beer and all that stuff mm-hmm. like I, I i would really love to see like what the uh, response is from that like preteen community or the, the early teen community like if they really dug it or if they they want to look up you know it's a older characters or something mm. yeah well we talked about like it not being very full in the in the theater like so i hope oh, that yeah. i hope that this gets out before um before uh, Endgame drops, because it's a really good movie. Yeah, before. I like how they drop Captain Marvel and then drop another Captain Marvel. It's great. Yeah. And that one dude is in both of the movies. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Dimon or... Oh, you're D- right. Dijamon uh, Shazam. The guy that plays Shazam is also uh, uh, Korath. I- yeah. Oh, I didn't put that together. That's so funny. I can't remember what's his um, name. His name is yeah. It's like Dijon. 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 So we were talking uh, before about Vince and I went to one screening and then uh, Josh went to another screening with his family and it's funny it dovetailed like Vince and I went to a four thirty showing, a four thirty mid four thirty p.m. midnight showing just yeah. Now, so you know how LA works, <laughs> and uh, Josh went to a seven seven thirty seven o'clock. So. Uh, both of our screenings at different theaters. Which theater did you go to? Uh, Pacific and Glendale. That just okay. seems to be the easy one. So for we us. went to Burbank 16, um, AMC 16, and uh, both of our theaters were at least uh, were pretty empty. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't yeah. full by any means. And it's it, it for those of you who don't know, like in LA, that's like a really bad sign because comes out tomorrow, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's tonight. Built for tomorrow. It's yeah. built for tomorrow, but you know, there's always like the night before. So like unless it's like a slow burner that kind of stays. Like Alita was kind of a slow burner. It mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily full, but people kept going to see it every week. I I don't know if this is going to I don't I don't know if it's going to like succeed necessarily. I don't know how much the budget was or how much they need to make back cuz there was a lot of marketing. Like they took over Comic-Con, uh, WonderCon, I mean. That mm-hmm. could, couldn't have been cheap. Like they had big I don't know WonderCons. I mean like while I love WonderCon, it's probably not the <laughs> well, most I mean, like, expensive they spent, place to but show a lot but, of money on but marketing. But like the, but the side of the building was the Shazam ad, oh, was it? you know. Okay. So I was like downtown that, too. That's not cheap. Or not downtown. Uh, Hollywood and Highland. Yeah, I've seen a lot yeah. of stuff. Huge, yeah. huge uh, billboards and, and just the sides of buildings. And, and you could tell that they had high aspirations for it because oh, yeah. it 
I know they're like, well, by now you weren't in the spoilers, but like, I think it was originally meant to be a Christmas movie because mm. the whole thing takes place during Thanksgiving. It Christmas. does take place during Christmas, yeah. So, and I could see them thinking that because it's such a big scale movie. But you got to think at some point someone saw it and they're like, you know what? Let's make this like a early summer thing or spring. Iron Man three was a Christmas movie, which oh, yeah, is yeah. weird. It comes out in May, you know. And, and it was one, it's probably it's one of the uh, lower rated like MCU movies. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like so. it. Uh, of the 3. MCU movies, I think that's probably one of my least favorite ones. I, I was fascinated with the suits, man. I was yeah, fascinated. That's fun. But in my own time, I've watched videos on Iron Man's suits. Mm-hmm. On a scale of one to ten, I wanted to ask everybody, and you guys out there too, write it in the comments. What do you think of Zachary Levi as Shazam, as a superhero in DC's universe? Um, for me. I don't know anything about Shazam, so if you're a Shazam, Shazam fanboy, I almost said Shabam, Shaboy. Anyway, Shabam! Uh, Shazam fanboy, um, forgive me, because I don't know if he's an actual fit, but as someone coming in from the outside, I thought he was pretty much perfect. Like, I couldn't see anything that could have been much better in my eyes, and I love that um, the whole movie, I was thinking, like, he's like a teenage, more innocent Deadpool for DC. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's so aware of the universe. They make slight references to Aquaman and Wonder Woman and Batman and Superman. And then, big spoiler, at the end, the Super- credits. Superman sits down with him at lunch. Well, but it's kind of. still not, yeah. It's not, it's, they don't, they're like, we don't know if we have Henry back yet. But <laughs> I'd actually, I, it'd been rumored that he was going to be, it was him. Yeah, it and might it might have been his body or something. Maybe. But they you could definitely tell that they were like, we don't want to commit to this just they yet. They couldn't yeah. afford the head. <laughs> exactly. It's but like I, Voltron. I love, I love, but only four lions. I love, I love Freddy's response because, like, ah, because it was, kind of it was literally <laughs> like his junk was right next to his face. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Um. All right. So, Josh, what do you think about Shazam and Zachary Levi? I think Zachary Shazam. Levi nailed it. I think, and I thought this when they chose him. Yeah. I think that he has a character and his, and even in his his movies beforehand and TV shows and stuff beforehand that shines that he is like a good hearted kid yeah mm-hmm. and i feel like he they picked him it was i, I heard that he turned it down the first time huh. interesting but, um i'd have to go back and double check that but i'm pretty sure was positive that i was listening to an interview with him that he had turned it down the first time and which is awesome to me he'd actually uh, i listened to another interview with him that he tried out to be star lord because that's one of his favorites star lord uh, he was actually right. fandral fan, fandral uh in um the warriors three oh. so uh he got no killed shit. in thor ragnarok Mm. So he's one of the guys of the Warriors 3 that gets <laughs> killed immediately. He gets, like, no words. Oh, that's amazing, so, though. He, he's in both worlds. So. That's funny. I, I definitely have love for the man, and I think uh, I've always wanted him to be somewhat of a superhero person icon in just TV, movies, whatever. It, it didn't matter. I just want to see the man succeed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he did an excellent job uh, in conveying the uh, bo- yeah, both the child aspect of shazam but also like uh showing us and showing the audience like what shazam is about and like where he where he lies and what what side of the fence he's on and so i feel like going forth from here we have a good foundation of of at least like where his head's at Mm -hmm. and the the kid i don't know his name that played the the asher angel I was okay. going to say, this was going to be the second half of that question is now, what do you think of the boy? I mean, granted that he never actually got to play the superhero part, I thought that there was a good um, connect between him and Zachary Levi. Like, I bought yeah. that it was the same person. Mm-hmm. He seems like a really great actor because, like, even though he stole stuff and everything, you feel the innocence. Yeah. I'm not saying that this is always the case, but I, I like that they touched on for a movie that clearly younger kids are going to see that there's a delusion to thinking that there's, like, a family loyalty Mm. Like in the traditional sense, mm-hmm. like he he had a family right there that wasn't blood related, mm-hmm. but was more there for him that he'd only known for a few days than the blood related mother that he'd been searching for his whole life. Yeah. Right. And to see that get shattered in him, like everyone, I think if if you're you know older, like I'm mean, gonna say older, like older than a teenager, I think all of us had a sense that his mother wasn't really looking for him because they even address that in the movie. They're like, your mother's never looked for you, you know. Yeah. So like. I, I was thinking, like, when this little boy gets lost at the fair, what parent just gives up yeah. at yeah. the fair? So, like, I, no parent gives so, up. So, well, some. That's Unless the thing. they don't want them. So, that, that was the thing was like, I, I was like, he, ha- he has this delusion of like, she's been looking for me, so he was going to do it and try like, to find, find her. her. And um, it was a 
cool when, little thing. When that gets shattered, like you, your heart breaks with his. It's what he needed, and it it literally took him to go and find her to to like flip that switch. And I love that they got Ian from Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, yes, to be the little brother. So Ian, uh, we don't know Ian personally, but we know Forrest, who's his older brother, the middle brother, and uh, fresh off the boat. Uh, it's funny. I wonder if there was any uh, rivalry there because Forrest, uh, he's looking to get into his, like action roles and stuff. You know, he's older now and he's like working out and stuff. Oh yeah. And to see the youngest brother, uh, younger than him, on Fresh Off the Boat get the superhero role, like yeah. I wonder how that played off. But he's he's great. I'm glad to see all those guys from Fresh Off the Boat like do more and more stuff. He played Eugene. What's yes. his name? Mm-hmm. And actually, I was going to jump into that. I did not think, and if you don't know much about Shazam, you probably don't want to know much about the Shazam, the Marvel family. Uh, I did not think that they were going to jump into the Marvel family immediately. Like oh, yeah? That. Like, I was like, oh, cool. Like, oh, the kids are the kids are the Marvel family. That's great. And then, like, oh, hey, hold on to the staff. We're going to make you all, like, I'm like what? The, they're going to do this? That was a surprise like, to me, too. And I didn't know about the Marvel family. Yeah. There, it, there was that part where, yeah, he's facing, uh, what's his face? Uh, Dr. S- Savan- Savanya? <laughs> Savaya? Yeah, in my head, Savannah. he was. In my, Savannah? In my yeah. head, he was Kano. <laughs> that was the only point of reference I had for that character. So, he's, yeah, he's fighting Dr. Savannah, and he's down right. on his knees, and then he starts to hear the original Shazam in his head. Let me transfer my power. Yeah, and he, and he starts, like, really thinking about what the guy was talking about with, like, his his the, all of the wizards are gone. He's the one, last one there. Mm-hmm. And then he remembers, like, oh, yeah, this thing is supposed to be, like, a family of people. And then he asks everyone to grab the staff. All of a sudden, everybody's sharing his and power. Was, and that was the true potential that um, they had referenced, the demons had referenced before. Mm-hmm. Right. And also, like, I think I think that's a callback to why the original Shazam, uh, like, trusted. Like, maybe he wasn't exactly the purest of heart, but in the end, like, he had the right situation and decision-making, you know? Like, mm-hmm. he had, like, uh, brothers and sisters that came from all different walks of life. So they all have something to bring to the table. Yeah, I don't know. In in the comics, was there a reason for the different powers? Did that manifest from their personality? Because the little girl's like really fast. You yeah, know? she's like, like yeah, ultra I, or whatever. You know, like I said, uh, or I don't know much about. I knew of the the Marvel family. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't obviously read these comics. So because to me, as like a someone a newbie coming into it, it looked like since there were people with like very different personalities, they all had different power sets that complemented each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I don't know if that was because of the personalities or those powers drew to those personalities. It was like the Power Rangers situation or something, you know. But yeah, like, I would to me, I would think that they'd all have the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they had even referenced um, that Shazam had given his power to someone before, mm-hmm. uh, before the um, Billy Batson, and uh, that's actually going to be um, Black Adam. Oh, uh, and that's actually I thought that uh, this movie was going to be um, Black Adam, which they cast the fir- the first person that they cast was Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh, that's yeah, right, Black Adam. So uh, um, I was thought that he was going to play both ends because mm. like. Um, if you look at them, they're very, they look very, very similar in the comics. Yeah. And so they'd be like, oh, and you just turn into this giant buff dude. But no, you grow up to who your character is, your yeah. full potential is going to be. So, yeah. Uh, and I was actually, I'm actually happy they didn't bring him in. Like, I'm yeah, yeah, happy yeah. that they, they, there he was, was so much happening in that yeah. movie. They already brought the, the Marvel family together. Yeah, in that this was, film. which to me was a lot. And that was already a big jump. So I'm glad they didn't go didn't, too far with everything. They didn't bring Dudley though. There's this there's this like oh, Uncle yeah. Dudley, which is uh, like part of the Marvel family. And he acts, he dresses like he's part of the Marvel family. <laughs> and he, but he's just not. like he can't, doesn't have any powers and he's like, oh man, my powers are not working today, guys. I'm gonna have to go down the street. You know what's funny? <laughs> I could totally see the foster dad becoming that. That's true. Because he's so nice. Like I was just telling Vince on the way home, oh, yeah. like those are cool foster parents. Yeah. Like, like the mom just like really cares about the kid. Like you get a sense that these parents actually care about the kids a lot. Oh, it's funny know. that uh, so he looks like there. He's got the blue on, just like yeah, uh, in the movie. Yeah, and they, they had uh, Mary with the skirt and whatnot. Like yeah, Mary. It, that's right. So, and she's Mary Marvel in the comics. Mm-hmm. So like the the inter- the really cool thing um, about the 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 version that we saw in the movie of the family. I didn't even know they're called the Marvel family until Josh pulled this thing up here. Mm. Same, yeah, but, I didn't know either. Um, was both in the foster kid sense and then when they all became superheroes. I didn't come into this movie expecting any diverse representation. Like, it wasn't in my head. I wasn't going to blame them for not and stuff. But then they did, like, a very organic, genuine representation of that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, like, hardcore fanboys of Shazam are going to hate that, mm. um, what tone that has, you know. 
But as far as like going to see a movie about superheroes, it seemed very like it wasn't like pushed. It's kind of like Runaways. It was just a bunch of kids. Yeah, like, since it was like a a home, mm-hmm. and there's obviously kids from a bunch of different, everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere that makes sense. Like so, yeah. I don't feel like there's gonna be people arguing about that because that makes sense. When uh, Zazie Beetz was cast as Domino, they're like she was white. I'm like. We say white, but like actually white, like alien white, like like a sheet of paper white. She was like plain like, like paper white. white. Yeah. So in you know in my head, there wasn't ever like an ethnicity tied to that. No. And so Zazie Beats was like when they when like, we first saw images of her, like yes, yeah. Uh, I that, mean, like I loved like, I loved her playing yeah. that role because it was fun. But I I felt that way. I felt oh, like really? why didn't they cast like a girl that looks like you know the girl in the comics? Oh, and, right. And, and like she has a you know obviously she has like a, a fro in the movie. And uh-huh. just, I also know, couldn't they flip see the colors like they put a little bit of white on her eye. Yeah, she's a black person as opposed to being super pale mutant with a yeah. little <laughs> oh, black yeah. thing around her eye. I also didn't sit, think Josh Brolin would be Cable until they sold me on that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Like I, I, so that's what I'm saying. Is I don't know. If if people are done like, because I don't know like how important each of these other characters are in people's minds, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't think that they're gonna throw a fit. Does anybody? To me, it was just really, it was really interesting. And then like uh, all the actors, like as, as like I said, I was really surprised to see Megan Good, um, who was I forget the little girl's name. Oh, Darla. Darla. Yeah. Like when she grew up, and, when she grew up, when she became like the uh, the superhero version of herself, yeah. to see her so jazzed about meeting Santa Claus, was so <laughs> adorable. That was so funny. And she's just like, my name's Darla. I've been very good this year. <laughs> and then Santa's like, okay. <laughs> oh, and that was another little shout out to Philly. When the reporter was like, let's talk to someone who saw what happened. And the doctor's like, it was fucking insane. <laughs> that is so great. So Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. Like every every day in the Philly news, someone is breaking the FCC. Just go to the Eagles games. There, there's like, okay, sir, what were you thinking about the weather? It's like, yeah, it was fucking crazy. Like, yeah, it's so <laughs> funny. They're like, sir, we're on national news. Okay. Does shit. anybody have a favorite child out of the the foster family? I think based on that, it was probably Darla. Like, I don't oh. know. She seemed really sweet to me. Like when when they looked at her, like a good sister would do that, and she was mm-hmm. like, I am a good sister. It was like, I'm so adorable. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I like when she's like, Yeah, somebody else said it. Now, yeah. <laughs> now oh, I'm, yeah. Free. I'm a good sister. <laughs> <laughs> I, to tell you the truth. I <laughs> definitely think Billy Batson, uh, uh, what's his Asher, yeah. did a really, really great job with that role. Like that for me personally, that would have been the, the make or break. Like if he did what didn't do a good kid role, mm-hmm. like it would I would have threw me out of the movie. Like like the kid um, Arthur or whatever from Aquaman. It yeah. had been like one of the worst castings ever. <laughs> that kid just not convinced. And yeah. I, I even even Scott uh, from Nerd Sync, mm-hmm. who's the biggest Aquaman fan on earth. And would figure if anything was like that kid was not good. Like a good thing he was only like a few seconds in that kind of montage. Yeah, but, like that was corny. Yeah, I mean, I think he did a really good job. I was a little worried at the beginning because I'm pretty positive he's like a Disney star or maybe a Nickelodeon star. Oh, really? One too. Another one of my favorites was Pedro. I like when in the in the scene where the mom brings uh, Billy into the house for the first time, and they head up to the room, and he's like, "Oh, say hi, Pedro," and Pedro just looks at him and goes, just does a little <laughs> head nod. He does that. He does that. He doesn't mean he, he don't take offense to that. But yeah, that was another thing. In addition to like all the physical diversity, like the personalities were all very, very interesting. Different. Yeah. Like I like that you had like Ian or what was his name in the movie? Eugene. Um, yeah, Eugene. He was just like he was like super into gaming. Like you could tell he's like a Fortnite kid. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> that was like, a great moment where he, he, the father finally goes over to take the headphones off of him because he's playing the video games. And he looks up and he goes, when did it get dark? Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no video games after it gets dark. When did it get dark? <laughs> I was I was hoping, before before that kid was cast, uh, Asher Angel was cast uh, as Billy, I was hoping that they would get Will from Stranger Things. Oh, okay. I can see that. I could see that, too. Because I feel like he's kind of, like, very skinny, very, like, the opposite of what Shazam is, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, like, this is more, I feel like this was a better choice because it, that would have made it a little bit more serious, I feel. He has, like, more of a serious tone to him, and this kid is more actually funny, so. Obviously, in the movie, Billy, like, has to gain his confidence, has to, like, get to a point to where he, could, he like, believes in himself enough to make things happen in, in a good way. Mm-hmm. And then in the beginning, I don't know. I feel like he became a better person throughout the movie. You guys agree with that? Like, Yeah. Not, and I feel like the family thing was obviously, like, the catalyst to that, but even beforehand, like, uh, uh, Asher just did a great job at, uh, doing the whole transition and like really read the script uh, both on film and 
reading it literally mm-hmm. really well. I love that part when he comes, when Shazam has him come to him, and uh, Shazam's like, I need someone pure of heart. And he's like, I, I just don't think there is someone out there like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that shows, an, you know, and the obviously it shows it, yeah. another quality of himself. Like, he was just honest off the bat. Like, well, you can tell he grew up on the streets. Yeah. yeah. Like, so he's, like, seen some stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of seeing some stuff, I love that they kept going back to the accidentally falling into the uh, strip club or whatever. Oh, that yeah, was great. It, so that was another Close thing. Close your eyes. Why? I was surprised <laughs> not how, how not like not unfamily, but like how uh, it wasn't as family friendly as I thought it was going to be. But like that, if you ask a fourteen year old boy, like a fourteen year old straight boy, like think of the first place that comes to your mind, and you've just been to a strip club for the first time, like it, like involuntarily yeah that i get it like it was like that that's hilarious like <laughs> he comes out doesn't have any money he's like you were in there for five minutes he's like they were very convincing, convincing yeah <laughs> <laughs> your friends walk out from the back rooms they're like she's she's just doing this to get her medical degree he's like oh yeah for greg it was a uh, law but sure <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool cool like <laughs> but uh yeah and I, I loved like the mary's response to covering her eyes like why can't i look and then Darla's like, "Is that glitter? Can I go back in? There's glitter." She was. She, I, I'm, I love I'm, glitter. I'm discovering now. She was my favorite like foster child. She's hilarious. <laughs> I love glitter. <laughs> oh man, I have to say for for DC, like the opening shot of that like drone, like it's, you're way up in the air and it's shooting down, and you see the car moving, and then you, it's like the opening scene when the movie just first starts. Mm-hmm. G- gives you just a great feel. So who directed this movie, and who... Uh, I don't know that. That's does Who wrote the script as well? Uh, screenplay by... Henry, Henry Gaden. 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 Directed by... I don't know any of these people. Oh, wait. This is the guy He's that... He's in horror movies. Yeah, do you know what Lights Out is? No. So he made this little short film that blew up on YouTube, and then they that movie did so well on YouTube that they commissioned like a full feature length version of it. Oh, wow. And he directed both. Like so he actually has like a Street YouTube cred. well YouTube tutorials <laughs> on like how to make like horror shots and direct and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like on I think on a film ride he actually did like a interview and a course of like how to make your indie film and stuff. So he's yeah, he's actually that's really it's cool to know that he he literally in the last like maybe less than 5 years has come up is that yeah yeah like has come up like through the ranks he went from making a youtube movie to like probably the biggest dc movie besides maybe aquaman or something yeah i mean that's kind of like coogler when he was like in the iron man screening he said yes. and then like later he's like i didn't d- never dream that i was actually <laughs> directing a marvel movie you know that's cool go figure it just took a new face to make dc have fun for once yeah mm. i feel like that they've been doing that for or uh, you know the comics have been doing that they've been like oh, hey yeah. let's find some like new younger people that yeah. you know like like a Kevin Feige see over this film mm-hmm. and you know have our input into it but at the same time know that they're gonna bring something better to the table mm-hmm. or at least a brighter newer thing to the table real quick I wanted to go back to uh, did we find out about the realms or the um, the caterpillar guy? oh the caterpillar is uh Mister Mind that thing like. When that happened, I almost stood up and like clapped because like DC has been so afraid of like being a comic book in, in movies. In their movies, yeah. So when there's like a little talking caterpillar, it's like a Shakespearean actor. I'm yeah. like, yes, you went for it. It's more yellow spandex. Yeah. Like just go there. Yeah. Like talking raccoon, woohoo, like, whatever. Like, suspend my belief. Sh- yes. Let we me. just saw like the yeah, even Shazam, like when you look at it, he's like where like his cape has like Greek like designs on mm-hmm. the side. Like like sure, I'm here for yeah, it. Like I'm down. He's like an evil telepathic worm. I sure. <laughs> I didn't need any explanation. Like I love that the world that they set the tone they set in the movie in the world was like, sure. That that was like my, my whole thing the whole movie and not in a bad way or sarcastic way. I was mm-hmm. just like, I'm here. It's like superheroes are here. Like some of the bunch of the toys that were on the shelf, they was like chucking at them. Like yeah. I think my kids have like some of them. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of cool that they're in. <laughs> yeah, they're in like the world of of superheroes. It's not dark. Zack Snyder verse anymore. Mm. Uh, I really, I don't know if they're going to turn things around with this DC EU thing. Even though they're obviously continuing with Wonder Woman and obviously with Aquaman two and possibly three with both of those. I know that Flash has been canceled, completely canceled now. Gotcha. And even uh, the kid um, that was playing him in the Justice League has basically walked away from it because he was trying to write direct it for a while. Uh, mm. Flash went for a good good while though. Before How many seasons it? was that? Oh no, I was talking about the the movie. Oh, the DCU. oh, yeah, yeah. This is another reason DC screwed up. Like they just separated everything, like simultaneously. Like 
you can't have like a current TV show running and then have the same character with a different actor and universe yeah. in the movie. Like it's so confusing. Mm. I wanted to bring up the the fact that because um, there may, may be a good amount of people that don't even know Shazam at all. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about Shazam being an acronym and and whether we like actually it's an acronym. If you break down. I didn't know that what they what they actually are and then the strengths of these people. Mm-hmm. If we can find out what. Wait, so they, so they do have individual powers. Well, no. Uh, like Shazam is Solomon, mm-hmm. Hercules, Hercules, oh, that. Atlas, Zeus, oh. and Achilles, and Mercury. I totally forgot. I, I didn't put that together because he did say that when he gave him the powers. He mm. he says them all, but and he and he says like the 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 points like Mercury is his strength, mm-hmm. uh, Achilles is his I guess speed. Uh, but uh, that was that's an interesting question for you guys listening too. Is is you know who was Solomon? Who was Hercules? Who was Atlas? Who was Zeus? And then uh, c- combining all their powers because we don't actually know all the powers that Shazam has. Mm-hmm. We know it, it all derives from a magical Especially rock. You get most of them, in and it, that, yeah. that's why I thought that they kind of for the uh, family it kind of divvied up one per because we never saw mm. Darla like shoot lightning. Yeah, maybe she was she was fast, and then they. And Freddie kind of made a note like, "Oh, super speed!" Right. And then someone else like was strong, but they couldn't fly. But one person just flew. Yeah, I think Freddie e- flew. Yeah. Eugene is like Hadouken. Yeah. That was was <laughs> oh, side note: I totally forgot. I love that uh, Mortal Kombat made a little cameo in this. Oh yeah. And that Eugene's references were all Mortal Kombat. He's like, "Finish him!" Yeah. I got the yep. voice. They're all. I got gamers. the voice. Like th- that was all, like a little bit that like I appreciate so much because like if I was his age. Um, and became a superhero, I would probably relate everything to Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat as well. Like, that's so amazing. When he said that, I was like, Rod's going to love this. (laughs) (laughs) He actually watched it before me, so (laughs) he already loved it. And he, when he showed him playing the game too, I was like, "Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the classic one, but close enough. Like, it was the it was the best one since the classic one. So, yeah, it makes me want to dive in and see like what Solomon's powers were. Um, we know Hercules was strong. Well, Solomon is Solomon's wisdom. from the Bible, right? He's uh, yeah, he's in a uh, king in the Bible. He's uh, King David's son, and he in the Bible he's the the one of the wisest people on earth because okay. he asked God for it. So wisdom, wisdom. Okay. which which is funny because they made a special point of saying like Freddie was like, well, I was just trying to rule out like super intelligence. <laughs> 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 my wiki just loaded finally yeah. and it actually does have the breakdown wisdom of solomon and en- enhanced intelligence uh knowledge of, and focus of the gods uh strength of Her- hercules superhuman strength uh stamina of atlas i was yeah i was thinking oh, of like, stamina of holding up the heavens that's that right sense. yeah Her- uh so superhuman stamina invulnerability superhuman uh durability and superhuman endurance the power of Zeus, power unlimited, lightning, immortality, uh, electric er, electricity generating and manipulation, uh, lightning, electricity, absorption, uh, force field. I didn't know the force field thing. Uh, and then courage of Achilles. Oh, it was uh, courage. Interesting. Indomitable will. So the will of the gods. Hmm. Uh, and then speed of Mercury, like we, like you. Had oh said. no, I thought it was flight. So speed is a, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Superhuman speed uh, and teleportation via the rock of uh, the Eternals. So, yeah. yeah, I kind, I kind of like that the kids didn't put that together, because yeah. most fourteen-year-old boys, <laughs> who especially skip school a lot, probably doesn't know their like Greek and Roman mythology that well. However, at the but end, <laughs> he, was t- he was talking about the seven deadly sins, and I was like, oh wow, he knows all these I know, seven he was deadly naming sins. Them like, all. <laughs> Which is, you know, it was a fun way to get, you know, the last get envy out. But like, that was cool. <laughs> that was really cool. And then watching that dude fall and everything. Mm. Oh my god, we we were talking about in the car uh, about when uh, Doctor Savannah, whatever, goes to his father's building. Yes. And b- b- like that scene, I don't want to ruin everything for you guys, but well, yeah, you should have seen it. By, you should have yeah. seen it by now. <laughs> if yeah. you're listening to this, it's I, go for it. <laughs> he grabs his brother. And just tosses him out the window without any hesitation, and yeah. I I cheered like <laughs> because like I, it's it's it sucks. He's the villain, and he's definitely like not a good person, but he's definitely a product of his family. Mm-hmm. And I I was like, I don't know the whole thing about his dad like yelling at him when he was a little kid. I'm like he's a little kid. Like mm. why, he called him a little shit and told him that he was like miserable and like I it was like what what what's going on? Yeah. yeah. So so when he like. 
Um, yeah, when he threw him out the window and like fed him to the demons and stuff, I was like, "Go for it, man!" Like, yeah, that freaked not my daughters out, or like uh, yeah. Ari a little bit, and definitely Penny. I didn't. Re- <laughs> that was before I realized it was going to be that like dark, dark, <laughs> like, and like, that section. Because all yeah. the yeah, all the the um uh, sins are creepy looking. They're big like gargoyles. Yeah, kind of. but they're like demon gargoyles, and, right. and they physically um they manifest good. like what their sins are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you could tell like greed had like multiple hands. Yeah, mm-hmm. and glutton was like glutton was like huge the mouth. obvious one. Yeah, he was the most obvious <laughs> one. Yeah, because he, he had a stomach that opened up into a mouth. Yep. And even they even said in the movie like, well, gluttony obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But did you did you realize that John Glover was in that was his dad, and John Glover is uh was in Smallville as Lex Luthor's father. Oh, so I and, never watched. Smallville. Oh, yeah. And yeah. also, he was in Batman and Robin, the one with George Clooney. Oh, wow. He was the guy that like creates uh, the the crazy mad scientist that creates That's poison right. ivy. That's oh. right. So it's funny that like, he's in, he like, dies in all of his movies. Yeah, it's true. Well, he didn't die. Did he die in this one? This one? Oh yeah, he got eaten up by. Oh, that's true. He let. Yeah. Him, I thought he was gonna let him live. He, he he let greed eat him. Yeah. He was like greed take him. Yeah. Uh, but uh, which I thought was poetic, and so it, it, this is the difference between like. Uh, being like young and then growing up, like now I'm older. I'm like, I see his point. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, to, in this, in the, in the, uh, the where we're at right now, let's give a, a round of applause for Billy's mom. I mean, that's some hell of a parenting right there. You just leave your child and yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, kudos to her at least for recognizing like. Mm, She's you know like what? I. She's like I saw you. So that wasn't after I, I, we got separated. I, know, I saw you. I know. And I, I mentioned you there. it before that like it showed the innocence of his delusion that like blood related family is always going to be faithful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really love that they showed the uh, difference in perspective. Yeah. Of like mm-hmm. how old he had been, like three or four maybe. Mm-hmm. In that shot, like his perspective, she's like, "Oh, mom's had a hard day," you know. And then like she tells a story, he's like, oh, I'm so, "Dude, I could just please." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I like that, like, you know, that Dr. Like, Sivana was, you know, he had his family, mm-hmm. but they, you know, they treated him like crap. And mm-hmm. there's all blood. But, like, Billy's family, the same way, only he ends yeah. up with the foster family, and they, they all love them. I I really love that. I yeah. just, you know, the opposite's just beautiful to me. What, what was the, um, I forget what movie, it was either a movie or TV show. I think it might have been a TV show. Someone said, like, there, it was, like, a villain father in prison, and then his son, like, visiting him in prison. And the Flash, and, mm-hmm. I haven't watched Flash, so I, it wasn't that. But <laughs> it was something like that. I think it was like African American characters, and the villain in prison was like, "Come on, son! Like, what's thicker than blood?" And <laughs> the son was like, "Loyalty." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he walks off. He's like, "F this, man!" Yeah. Like, <laughs> so if it wasn't for the fact that they had already painted this movie where I, I'm not supposed to take things seriously. Like, because that was why I enjoyed it. Because they they set the tone right from the beginning. Like, okay, cool. I'm just here for the ride. Now, had it been like a Zack Snyder version of this, and I'm like meticulously going over every detail, I'd have been like, so why was the guy dying then who who gave him all these powers if he had all of this (laughs) endurance? He just got old. Wait, immortality. Immortality, yeah. And then why did he instantly die? I guess I know why he instantly died when he gave him away because he just aged all of a sudden or something. Mm, But like, I was like, how did he run out of powers? And I guess it was his job to guard the seven deadly sins. Is and then, Billy going to do that? But and then well, there he was, had he had captured them before, yeah. and so he has kind of like. But then there was like place. this weird Mortal Kombat type agreement where like they each were going to choose a champion to fight or something, like because oh this, when they went this, to the battle, well because the sins were like you haven't chosen your champion yet, it was like wait was there some sort of game made up? Uh, <laughs> that's but, right. So they I always didn't, choose but, a champion. but that didn't even bother me. Like, like I said, because the world they set up was like all this shit's here. Sure, mm-hmm. let's go for it. And that, everybody it, in the movie is believing it. They're yeah, just, and they're just going about their day. Like whatever. And, there, and there's a caterpillar like is overseeing all this for some reason. Like <laughs> it's all good. Like which but, isn't his, the other? They introduced both of the main villains in Shazam. Mm-hmm. As a, as a, like we we're going through, I'm reading all this stuff, mm-hmm. and those are literally the two big ones: is Doctor Savannah and the the caterpillar guy. And then the second end credit thing it was more of like a joke where he they were trying to see if he had Aquaman's powers. And like Freddy's wearing the Aquaman shirt, yeah, mm-hmm. and stuff. It was like a cute little jab at things, but it was more of like one of those Deadpool moments. Yeah, it was like kind of meta, or like <laughs> make it. <laughs> well, once again, you live in a world of superheroes, so like you, know, you and control like billions of fish. It's not that cool. <laughs> did, did you watch the uh, the end credit animations and stuff? Like, I loved he took Wonder Woman to prom. Oh yeah, 
um, and that Aquaman stole his thunder for the selfie busking mm-hmm. stuff. Like it was all these little nods of like they live in like it kind of gave me like a montage of like what his life is kind of like now. Yeah. You know? I love that it was a Ramones song again, yeah. which worked really, really well for the Spider-Man uh, yeah. <laughs> Homecoming movie. Oh, so. right. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing, too. It was kind of like drawing, kind of like on a yeah. notebook paper. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. It's the same as Deadpool, yeah. Oh. and Interesting. Actually, I mentioned this to Vince in the car on the way home. was like, they didn't make any 90s references, but I very much got like a 90s superhero movie vibe from it for me. Like, a little bit. It was just, well. It's like the comically huge, like muscle mm-hmm. suit, and like they're like, "I'm a good guy. Why? He's a good guy. That's the villain. Why? He's this is a bad guy. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> he just looks evil. And the brightest color things in there are clearly the heroes. They stand out. Like that's the thing is Shazam and any of the Shazam like the Marvel family, they stand out in any frame like mm-hmm. clear as day, even against like a carnival or something because they're costumes are so bright yeah and that's yeah. what we wanted to see in that you know there's that moment on the train when he first uh finally gets his powers he, he gets zapped back into the subway mm-hmm. and then he finds that guy over top of him like white with red and gold accent it shouldn't work but it does that was, baby yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny dc does a great job with their animated films mm-hmm. like they have full-length animated films uh they're normally based on like stories uh, mm-hmm. arcs that they've done in the past there's a there's a Shazam one that's really good Shazam and Black Adam, uh, I think it's actually a two for it where like I think there's something afterwards mm. uh, I don't know if it's Green Arrow or, or whatever it was but like it's really really good Superman's involved in it and actually if you watch the Justice League Unlimited I think too there's a good show with Shazam in it where he kind of gets called up to join the Justice League and Superman's just being a jerk like an <laughs> absolute jerk even though like Lex Luthor Luthor's basically baiting him mm-hmm. and uh, Shazam basically. Is, tries to take on Superman and Superman basically at the end kind of puts Shazam down like as mm-hmm. a kid. But like you could tell by the end when he has to do that, that like Shazam is the, the one in the right and Superman mm-hmm. who's, you know, always the boy scout is the one that shouldn't have flipped out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty good. If you, if you haven't seen any, if you haven't seen this yet and you're listening to this, you know, pick those up. You know, I think they're on, I think they're on Netflix or whatever they are. Yeah. I was going to pose the last question here. When did Shazam first hit? comics what year i i, worry, I don't remember, i didn't remember his golden age so i'm gonna guess 40s 45 44 43 and hmm. actually i'm just guessing too does he predate superman then oh wow he actually appeared february 1940 in whiz comics number two so we're going back folks this is pretty much around the same time the superman and mm-hmm. yeah. oh. America and superman and when when was batman Superman's first appearance was June 1938. Wow. And Batman's first appearance was May 1939. Oh, actually, uh, Captain America's is 1941 of March. So he's a little bit further than I thought. That's amazing yeah. how long ago that was. Mm-hmm. And and really, it, it, to think of it more uh, existentially, how short of a time it was. Yeah. Because... <laughs> It is it's long ago thinking about it now, but that wasn't a long time ago. I'm definitely wanting to go back and like I think DC Universe, which is like their streaming app, mm-hmm. uh, I think they're gonna add all of their comics to it soon. Uh, uh, I know Marvel, you can go back to the beginning. I think they just don't have like the last year or so on there mm-hmm. because they want you to actually buy the comics at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I I want to go back in time and start. You know, I know you could probably get up to the 80s pretty quick. Yeah. And most of them, but man, if I only had time to just sit and read comics, yeah. I would mm-hmm. totally would. You know, real quick, the other thing I was going to point out for me as somebody who didn't know anything about Shazam going in was I expected him to be um, just pretty much like a Superman clone, and he's very very similar to Superman. But the the actors, both Zachary Levi and uh, Asher Angel or whatever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, did a really good job of like setting a very like nuanced personality that was different than Superman. Because like, you point out like Superman is the Boy Scout. Um, I'm just not even gonna pretend Henry Cavill Superman exists in this universe because that's a whole other, like weird, like dark, like he's not even Superman, like <laughs> some some weird like dark Phoenix shit going on, you know, like like so, but like as far as like Superman being the Boy Scout, like this is like a kid, yeah. like uh, Vincent mentioned before, like you could see in the movie him like becoming a better person. I, it's less becoming a better person and just like growing up, you know, like you mm, all three of yeah. us remember being teenagers growing up, like your point of views like. You know, like uh, you you go to the strip club for the first time, and then like a week later, someone's like, "Think of the first place that comes to your mind." Uh, not the strip club, not the strip <laughs> club, not the strip club. Like, <laughs> it's like uh, he's just, I've never he's been just, to the strip he, club. He's just a, oh okay. 
Neither. Neither have I. I. <laughs> I've been to not just one. He's like, <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> anyway, like the. But no, he, he's just a kid. Like even like when we saw him, like he was like his first thought was like, I'm gonna go buy beer. Like literally the first thing he yeah. does. But then he like they taste it and like, Ugh, yeah. why? What is this? Like, <laughs> they go back and get junk food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's perfect. I would have totally did that too. Actually, that's funny. That's how like kind of, like my dad when I was I don't even know how young I was. Not too too young, but like old enough to be curious. I think at like New Year's, my dad was like, here, take a sip of my beer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is this? And then it just erased all the mystery for me. So yeah. until I became like an older teenager, I was like, okay, that's cool. Parents liquor cabinets over there. Same. My I dad just did the candy. same thing. He's like, here, taste this. And it's like, oh, it's awful. He's like, it's right. It's awful. Don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my dad even told me. He was just like, here you go. Is it? <laughs> He's also magical, by the way. So oh, yeah, like, there's a lot of really aspects cool. of him. Like Superman has a very... Uh, you know, Sci-fi. he's very imper- impervious, but he can be easily harmed by yeah. magic. He's, so he's a Kryptonian. <sighs> There's it's no it's magic a, there. Yeah, it's like an alien science. So like any uh, magic like harms Superman like super easy. So yeah, yeah. So from scale of one to ten, what does everybody rate the movie? Ten being the best. It's either like a really s- strong seven or eight for me. Cause like it's not perfect. Like there's mo- like a nine or ten on my scales. Like end game. That's great though. <laughs> or like you know, an eight's like, a pretty. That's a solid, solid like number. Right like I I didn't expect. I mean to be completely honest, I was going in to be. Ex- I was excited to go see the movie because everybody talked about it, but I had no interest in Shazam before this. Mm-hmm. Like I had no vested interest in it. So hmm. I would probably like I know Rotten Tomatoes gave it a ninety three. Wow. I would oh, wow. probably say that. I mean, it's. I'm not gonna give it a full hundred percent to say it was perfect because so that's there's a, obviously that's some like a things. Nine. Yeah, nine out of ten, I guess. There's some things, you know, obviously that you you know you could change in, in any of these movies that you'd probably be like, oh, I wish it was this way, but we're all different. We'd all like other mm-hmm. things changed or whatever. But you know, it as a movie, it came together well. It's DC's first movie that they did like that. I didn't have problems with. Mm. You know, <laughs> you know something they did themselves a favor too is they this guy who directed or whoever the screenplay figured out a way to make the universe connected, but not reliant mm-hmm. on any other property like it. I very much felt like it was a complete movie. They could never do another Shazam movie, and I'm completely happy. Like nothing was left like un, you know, mm-hmm. like undone, or whatever. But it did feel like there could be other things. Like we, like by that last end credit, of like is he gonna have a little run with Aquaman? Like as a cameo? <laughs> yeah, I dig it. That's fine. That'd be great, right? Yeah, I, I, I really hope that. They move forward with the DC universe starting now. Like I know that they've uh, yeah, yeah. they've basically been like we don't want to attach these things together because they did a poor job of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's not like it wouldn't work. They just did a piss poor job of it. Right. So this like is, this is like DC's Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, a little bit. I know that Shazam's not Deadpool. Like it's not fourth wall breaking or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think because it already kind of feels like he could be that for the DC universe. That's the that's the pivot point they could use. Like Shazam could be the commentary and all this stuff, and then they could just. It could be like a magician. Like, they just distract us. Like, Shazam, da, 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 <laughs> and there's a new Flash. Like, you know, like, and it would be fine. I think everybody would be fine. It's true. <laughs> They've definitely opened it up for for a lot of things. Yeah. Like, I think they could do the next Shazam movie, like, picking up from the uh, Superman sitting down the table. Yes. Like, make a joke real quick. Everybody's, like, laughing. Oh, that's a really fun meta joke. It sits down. is not Henry Cavill. <laughs> and because they distracted us, it's like, oh, this case fine. It's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> I mean, they talked about obviously they're going to be uh, Matt. Uh, is it Matt Reeves? I think is the guy's name who's okay. doing uh, the next Batman movie. Uh. So um, I would really, ho- I would would hope that they start bringing in the Bat family with that, you know, to where they have Great. Nightwing and everything else, or you know, Jason Todd or, or something, you know, to where you get a little bit more than just like Batman versus Joker, you know, like, yeah. or Clayface would be like Ooh, he's one of my. I favorites. forgot about Clayface. Mix it in. He's did, one of my favorite bad guys. Did so. he start in the animated series or was he from the comics? Pretty awesome if he started in the comics, yeah. Okay, because I the first time I saw him was in the animated yeah. series. Like th- th- that's cool. I forgot about him. Yeah, for me, this was a breath of fresh air. Uh, also, not knowing a whole ton about Shazam. I mean, I knew about Shazam, and I, I I'm pretty sure I, I maybe have read like maybe one comic, but I'll, I, not that I can even recall right now. So maybe not even one. Uh, but having that like fresh perspective, like I, di- I didn't have any expectations. Like I just went into the movie thinking, like, hey, this is going to be a great ride, and it ended up being way more than I expected. Like way over my expectations of the movie, which was none, I guess. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, DC uh, set that bar so high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I definitely give it a, a nine out of ten as well. I, I don't think it was a, t- a perfect ten, uh, and the only reason I don't think it's a perfect ten is because we don't. I don't have enough data to to know what DC's ten looks like. To me, DC's ten is like second act of Wonder Woman, but don't screw up the third act. You know that <laughs> kind of thing. Because uh, lame bad guy. At well, because well, like the with whole, the weird mustache. Because the whole like <laughs> a great mustache. That moment. So we actually uh, some of you who followed our. Uh, our KVC channel know that like when Wonder Woman was premiering like three days before Vince and I went to Patty Jenkins like pre-party at YouTube and she had spoken there um we got there a little late so they they actually screened it for some people who got there on time so we didn't get to see it then but we saw the premiere like the people who screened it they were like crying and stuff I'm like this cannot be that good <laughs> I've seen DC movies but she had mentioned that that the no man's land scene where Wonder Woman stands up and walks through when no one else will Warner wanted to cut they were they were fighting so hard to cut that scene and Patty was like you can't get rid of the scene because this is the moment that defines who Diana is yeah and I, I was like, I cannot even imagine this movie without that scene. And when it happened in the movie theater, it was one of those times where I wasn't like bawling, but I was like tearing up like this is such a beautiful moment. Like I feel like people clapped. Didn't people yeah, clap? Yeah. I think people did. Because we were we were the premiere, so it was like everybody, it, it was just because she said the thing that no hero in the last twenty years of movies has said. She's like somebody has to I like she wants to be a hero. She's like she wants to do it, you know? Yeah, she wasn't like, ah, oh, I hate being a hero. <laughs> <laughs> And she was like looking, it's like she was in it. So it was a very subtle, like it wasn't about men, but it was a very subtle thing that she was surrounded by in that time period. Like men were considered like superior to everything. So she's like, I'm surrounded by a bunch of men who are hiding in a like a hole. You know, they're supposed to be fighting for this country. And she's like, what are you doing? And then she gets up, she takes like her stuff off and then like walks through like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and that first scene of Justice League, like, Oh, second act of of Wonder Woman oh, yeah. and that first scene in Justice League. DC, do it. That's going to be my new slogan. DC, do it. See, mine's always DC, do better. Every time we see friends that work at Warner Brothers, we're like, oh, so good to see you again, Laura. Do better at DC. Anyway, you want to go for a drink? <laughs> Right, there was so definitely some like that Justice League movie didn't like it disappointed me obviously but like mm-hmm. I was expecting far worse. That's it was true. at least somewhat watchable. When we came out of our <laughs> screening, we were like, "Sure, that was better than I expected. Mm. Um, not good, but yeah. it was better than I expected." I finally rewatched it. Still feels the same. <laughs> <laughs> like you'd said on a podcast earlier, like I have to watch it. It's like you don't have to, dude. You don't, what, you don't have to. Col- Colby from that. Colby from Boss Level Eight mentioned the same thing. It's like we still haven't seen the actual theatrical cut. Like I have a feeling that unless they just reshot the whole movie or just made it Wonder Woman two, yeah, it's not that much better. <laughs> it, it, yeah, no. All right, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Jazam was way better than I thought it was going to be. I had a lot of fun. I'll probably watch it again. Um, and I'm I'm on board for DC stuff if they're down to have fun like they did this time absolutely but if the next movie is like shazam goes to the dark side then i'm out yeah i (laughs) really enjoyed it um i think that if dc continues this way that they could do really really well i mean if they would have started out something like this with superman i think they would have had an amazing footing for doing a bigger dcu and had something like marvel does Mm. Mm -hmm. maybe better dc i will always have open arms for you even though that we have battle scars and things that didn't really work in the past. And they'll do, continue to burn you. Do us <laughs> right with this new Shazam timeline. The next one should be amazing because the way y'all set it up, you could go for a few movies on this mm-hmm. and you can introduce some really cool people or bring in Justice League or anything. Just like, don't mess it up. Do us right, DC. We love you. I hope you guys, guys. yeah, that's just because if you stuck around this long, make sure to uh, check out all our other stuffs, music, our channels. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Yellow Spandex. We'll see you next episode. Bye.